What's up, guys, and welcome back to another episode of Fanboy Talks, where we talk about everything you guys might care about. I'm your host, Von Hyde, alongside the big poobah himself, Chase Hopkins. Hello, Guardians. Ooh! That's a little, I guess, a, a prelude to what we're going to talk about today. We are doing our, god damn it, our Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 review. So how'd you feel about it? Just broad strokes. This is spoiler-free right now. We're going to get into spoilers a little bit later. How'd you feel about it? It was... At some points, I'm not going to lie, it was quite boring. Yeah, it... I mean, it depends on... It did on what a lot of, like, uh, relationship building, which I guess it makes sense for the type of... See, I'm a big fan of it. Well, I, it was I a great it was movie. Really good. It was a great movie, but I didn't no, like I the, the whole like. Building. Oh, I'm not a fan of that. Yeah, you're you're like the comedy action guy. Yeah, I'm all for that. You are the ridiculous seven guy. Six. No seven. No six. That's the Adam Sandler ridiculous seven, like really stupid. Adam Sandler's ridiculous six. No it's seven. I have no idea. Isn't it? I don't know. I think it's. Is it the seven? I think seven? it's six. It's six. What? <laughs> Our research team just said it was six. Hey, dude, that works. That works. Uh, so I absolutely love Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Two. I oh, thought it was a great movie. You've already seen it twice, so I have. Yeah, I I've seen it twice. Like I'm it. gonna go see it again on on Tuesday. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Tomorrow, from when this video posts, I'm gonna go see it again because it's cheap, and I want to see it. Again. I <laughs> I thought it was a really good movie, and I feel like they did very good well at building some characters i mean the relationships i really don't care about too much that's just me but building characters such as like drax they really built him into i mean the first one he was funny and like a a, a nice addition but in this one he felt more like a fan favorite yeah like he he felt more fully fleshed out like what i like to what i've thought about this movie is it included what it was just like the original guardians is what i wanted and more that's why i can't say it's better than the original guardians or worse i think it's equal in my mind a lot of people are like trying to say which one's better who the fuck cares which one's better if it's a good movie it's a good movie it doesn't matter yeah i don't i don't like the whole like comparing it to the first one it never works because sequels always suffer because when you do something well first of all you have to one up it and it's like that's just ridiculous and it's really it would be really hard to one up the first one so see i feel that this one might be better. A lot of people are saying that this one didn't one up the other one, but I feel that it could have one upped it because it gave me all the relationships, the the it gave me Star Lord, it gave me Gamora, it gave me all that stuff, but it also gave me like a lot more Drax, a lot more Baby Groot. It gave me characters that I like, I cared about in the original, but didn't know how much I cared about until this one. Yeah, Baby Groot was it was pretty awesome. I didn't. He was fantastic. I didn't know like going into it. I didn't think. That they would be able to incorporate him without making it feel forced. Yeah, and they, like he was just an awkward, cute kid. Yeah, and they really did a good job about adding him without making it feel really forced. And yeah, he definitely felt like a character because it was it was not just about like him being cute. It was about like he was cute, but he was also like kind of he was their baby. Well, he was still Groot too, so yeah. he still felt like he was super all powerful. But he's not. He's just this little baby. <laughs> In this one, he's actually not, like, powerful at all. <laughs> he's just kind of, I mean, of, like, he, he does up. mess someone up, but... Yeah, yeah, that definitely does happen. Yeah. I really enjoyed it. I thought it was super funny. It had all, like, great story, uh, a lot of great story in it. Somebody did point out to me recently that it uh, kind of had, like, I wouldn't say a character flaw. It had, like, kind of a plot hole. Because Ego basically, like, he does something on Earth. He does something to it, and nobody stops it. And somebody was like, you're telling me that all the superheroes on Earth are just, like, ignoring, like, they're just ignoring Missouri? They just don't give a shit? It's usually how it happens. Yeah, I know. And I was like, eh, who fucking cares about a Dare Queen in Missouri? Nobody. It's, it's <laughs> Missouri. Does it really matter? Yeah, right. I mean, it matters in the grand scheme of things. I mean, we... In superhero, I mean, they gotta save, like, New York and other big The cities. world. The world. <laughs> not just Missouri. Not just Missouri. <laughs> so, I mean... Yeah, I didn't find it that big of a plot hole. I honestly think that if, like, it becomes that big of a thing, they'll explain it in, the, in like, the next movie, or they'll explain it in, um... What's the next one coming up? There's another one coming up, too. So, they actually explained the whole plot hole that I was talking about, um, the whole Ego Blob plot hole. 
It, well, I guess they didn't necessarily explain it. I watched a couple of videos after actually recording that. That's why it's like kind of a quick edit here. Um, I watched a couple of videos afterwards. And the funny thing is the video didn't even explain it, which it was supposed to. It was actually the comments that explained it. Several people actually said about it. Um, so in chronological order, this movie actually... So uh, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 actually comes directly after the original. So it is actually in about 2014. Um, so when the Eagle Blob and the whole Missouri incident happens, it's actually during the events of, from what I understand, it's uh, during the events of Civil War. So the, all of the superheroes not necessarily showing up wasn't, it's not really a plot hole and it's not that it's not explained. It's kind of just an inference. Like most people are just assuming that it was actually because they had better things to do. You know, the Winter Soldier being the whole fall of shield and everything i i would assume they actually had something better to do ragnarok comes out soon yeah thor ragnarok uh i don't think they'll explain it in that obviously yeah that, it's about thor that wouldn't make that wouldn't make very much sense i think in the movie infinity after that War. which i think is i don't think infinity it's wars coming infinity out next. War yet. there's there's another one coming up soon um it actually might be I'm not 100% sure. So. Uh, yeah, me neither. I'm not that but connected. But in the next in the one, MCU. I feel like if it was that big of a thing, they'd just be like, oh yeah, it turns out that the the, the timeline of Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 fell directly in the timeline where like in Civil War when they were all locked up. They're like, oh yeah, no, they were all indisposed. They'll, they'll somehow <laughs> bring it up like you guys in the next movie or whatever. It'll be like, you guys remember what happened in Missouri? We couldn't get there because we were Yeah, they'll say locked something up or about something. It. They'll mention yeah. it, but... Whether it's a really a big deal or not, it, 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 it's, it's kind of like deal. how uh, it's not in, a big deal. in Ant Man they spoke about like how uh, why Hank Pym didn't go to the Avengers and he's like they're too busy dropping cities. Yeah, it's I was they, like, yeah, they, they they're very fair. clever about it. So. Yeah, they kind of like mold it, mold the world together in kind of a weird way that I really enjoy. And it works because yeah, yeah, it definitely works. Unfortunately, uh, I don't think DC would be able to do that, but. I'm they're, not even saying this right now. They're going to try. Not getting into it. Just, I think Justice League is going to be really good. Oh, I think Wonder it's Wonder Woman's be great. coming out. Looks good. Yeah. Looks really good. Baywatch mm. is coming out. Baywatch looks really good. Has absolutely awesome. nothing to do with it, but The Rock is a superhero by himself. So. Yeah. So. I mean, Zac Efron's super gorgeous. So. It's something. That is something. Are we going to get into the spoilers <laughs> yet? Or are we just yeah. Gonna see yeah, let's get into spoilers. So, right now, men. we're going to get into the spoilers of Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. So I honestly like some of the more spoiler parts of the of this one. Um, I really enjoyed the inclusion of Yondu. I thought he was he was a lot more well developed and he was more interesting than he was in the original. Cause I I cared about him in the original. I thought he was really cool and he was really interesting. But this actually like added a lot to him that I didn't think it would before. Yeah, like, I, I was really sad. Yeah, Yondu's a pretty great character. He really was. And uh, it kind of all came around and was like, oh. I mean, this is our spoiler section, so we could say what It's happened. like, I'm not your. He said, I'm not your dad, but I'm, I'm not your, your father, father but I'm not like your that. dad. Yeah, he, he ends up being like, it was kind of a. What I was looking for was there the whole time kind of a thing. So essentially, ego, gigantic dick with a huge ego, you know? Or the other way around, you never know, because there is some penis talk. He says he's got a pretty good penis. That says happens. It's, it's, he says it's, he's well endowed. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. But uh, he eventually, like, shit happens with him. He basically becomes the villain of the movie, and then it comes out that like Yondu has thought of himself as like Peter is always looking for a father, and it turns out that Yondu was essentially like not his father, but he was his dad. And he basically says like, "Oh, I'm sorry for like being kind of a shitty dad, but." You know, I was your dad, kind of a thing. He's like, I, he was like, was I was great. there for you. Yeah. I especially love when he was telling Peter he doesn't fly the arrow with his head, he flies it with his heart. And then the flashbacks when it's like Yondu teaching him how to shoot his guns. I was like, oh! It was, it was. That hit me in the feels. And like him and Drax were laughing, and it was like him and Gamora. Uh... I was like, that was honestly like. Nice. That was honestly like the perfect kind of. Uh, the perfect flashbacks to put in. Because I wasn't expecting to see Baby Peter. You know what I mean? I, was, uh, I wasn't expecting to see that. It, you give me a tear. Yeah. But they do show... Uh, um, Yondu, unfortunately... Uh... <laughs> no tear. 
<laughs> he dies. Yeah, he dies. <laughs> <laughs> He's trying to see if I can get the tear out, but you're like one to. single man tear. You're like, Wah! I'm gonna tell you right now. It's not much of a spoiler, but um, Drax is really funny. He's one movie. of the best parts of this movie. He's really Seriously. funny, and he talks about. Or at one point, they introduced a new character, Mantis, and she was on. She was on Ego's island, or island, <laughs> Ego's planet, planet, with Ego. On him. And uh, the reason she was there is because Ego always had a hard time sleeping or something. So she had these powers or whatever. She could help him sleep. She's and, an empath. And so at one point, uh, they are trying to kill him, so she puts him to sleep. And uh, it's the him now as the planet rather than... Yeah, then it the is like guy. personification because Peter fucks his shit up. Yeah, so and then they drop. A so she's like keeping him asleep, and there's like stuff flying around, and she gets railed in the head, like ridiculously hard. By a hard. piece of a ship. Yeah, just <laughs> boom, and then Drax goes. He's like, he's like, he's like, Mantis, look out! After like, like two like, seconds later, she, two a, after she got hit, it was so funny. Fucking pones her. It, it was so funny. Gotta bring back Pound. And then uh, he talks about how ugly he thinks she is. and <laughs> So funny. Yeah, I, ugly people. He's like how it is, says how he uh, b he feels bad for beautiful people because you never know who to trust. But ugly people, if somebody loves you, they, they obviously love you for who you are. Right. <laughs> was, it's, I thought that was great. It's really funny. And then I heard a lot of people were getting like really mad about like, how he kept oh saying, how he kept saying she was ugly yeah and it was like it was just comedy it was dude. just like, comedy i mean you say you're ugly i say you're well. beautiful <laughs> <laughs> no. uh but it uh it was really a good movie and uh there's not a whole lot of spoilers really except for like i mean you can't get into it uh yondu dies um but. one of the biggest like and best twists i've seen in these movies so far which I honestly, I saw coming, but I also didn't see coming, was that Ego, Peter's father, actually killed his mom. Like, he put the tumor in her head. Yeah. And, and, and I uh, love how it immediately snaps out Peter. Peter was not And he just that, fucking rails him. Yeah, like, he was not <laughs> happy about that. That was awesome. That was exactly what I hoped, like, Peter would do in that scenario. Because it shows that he's not, like, he's not, I don't know. I was going to say he's not, like, the average hero, but when uh, Tony Stark finds out that Bucky kills his parents... He, like, fucking tries to murder him. So I was going to say, he's not, like, the average hero. I guess he's not, like, Captain America. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, it was, it's, it kind of shows that, like, he wasn't blinded by the fact that he found his father. He was blinded, or he was, not blinded, but he was, really loved his mom because that's who he had. Yeah, he so, had, like, the, the prospects of, like, infinite power. He was a god. He was a celestial. He just gives it up because this guy killed his mom. Yeah, and... and I'm uh, like, that shows a lot of depth to Peter Carrot. And Peter's he gave up, um... Was it when you're never gonna die? I forget. Immortality? Yeah, he gave up mortality. He would live forever. But he gave it up because this dude killed his mom and he was not happy about it. Honestly, one of the grossest things I have ever seen, and, like, one of the most creepy, the grossest thing was when Ego dies and his face melts in to, like, Sam. Oh, yeah. Ugh. That was disgusting. I will straight up throw up next time I see that movie, because that was... His face, like, envelops. It's like... It, like, turns into, like, kind of sand and just, like, falls in. It's like that moon sand you used to play as a kid and you could, like, put it together. It w there was that baseball video game that had that glitch about the face. Oh my That's kind of what it reminded MLB me of. MLB The Show 17, where yeah. it had the glitch face that looked oh. like an almond. Please don't look that up. It's so gross. It's but there scary. was that, and then one of the creepiest parts in this movie, like, I didn't expect any of it to be creepy, but this was actually creepy to me, is when Ego, like, wakes back up after Mantis gets knocked, knocked the fuck out, and uh, he's, like, walking down and slowly assembling his body from, oh. like, just the light. I was, like, Ugh. Yeah, it was... It was literally, saw, like, like, one of the most unsettling things I've ever seen. It was pretty creepy. But... Yeah, it was super creepy. Like, in The Watchmen, I you, it. See, you see Dr. Uh, Doctor Manhattan put, him, put himself together like that, but it is not nearly as creepy. Like, this is just sincerely, like, gross. Yeah, it's not... Very disgusting. Yes, honestly. for sure. Um, but yeah, I absolutely love this movie. Great I, movie. Go see it. Yeah, I would definitely recommend going right to see now. It. Drax, Baby Groot, fantastic. It made, for, it made for a funny time. A funny time. Funny time. It was pretty neat. It was a great movie. It was pretty neat. I can't wait to see it again on Tuesday. For sure. 
If I will pay to see this movie three times... You should pay to see it once. I mean, you probably shouldn't listen to me because I also... A lot of people hate Batman v Superman and I paid like six times for It's got movie. the Simply Hawkward seal of approval. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching this. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's... Go watch it. And... That's... Uh, for the most part, the end of this review. Uh, if you guys like this, make sure you click that like button down below. Make sure you subscribe for all of our upcoming content. We post Fanboy Talks every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. We post video game reviews and stuff like that during Tuesday and Thursday. We will be posting a review for Little Nightmares and a review for Flint Hook on Tuesday and Thursday. Both of them. Locked down. <laughs> And make sure you leave a comment letting us know how you felt about this movie, if you liked our review, and anything else. I hope you guys have a great day.